Hi, my name is Robert. I come to you as an automobile enthusiast that have maintained, serviced, and repaired my own vehicles in excess of 30 years. I've had a car that lasts over 400,000 miles. The current car that I'm driving has over 220,000 miles on it. It's a 95 model. So I hope you can benefit from the information I share. Thanks for tuning in. Working on this Jeep Grand Cherokee, it's having problems uh, running once it gets warm. Initially through a crank sensor code, then a crank and cam sensor was replaced. Then it started throwing codes for the cool pack unit that was replaced. Just has had several issues and now it's still, it runs and drives good when it's ice cold. Once it warms up, it starts missing and shutting down and not starting and not idling. So I got a Mopar crank sensor that I'm going to put in. Costs about 70 bucks from the dealer. So I'm going to see if that fixes the problem. Here are the multiple codes that this Cherokee Storm 1391 pending. The 0351 coil, which was just replaced. And then a leak detection 1494 comes and goes. But this is the one I think that's causing the problem, so I'm going to replace the crank sensor. This is everything you need to change a crank sensor on a, I guess a, a 99 through 2004 Jeep Grand Cherokee may apply to others. You need the crank sensor, you need a 3 8 inch ratchet, a 3 8 inch socket, that socket will actually fit a uh, bracket bolt you need the uh, 7 16 socket to fit on the bolt that goes in the crank sensor and then you need this 11 16 socket for that bracket you need extensions at least 10 inches worth of extensions maybe 12 and you need a swivel um, and uh, a small hand and a small arm will work wonders for you I also had uh, ramps to put the jeep up on i uh, be easier to get under there if you put it on ramps or jack stands i also had uh, something to lay on and uh something to kneel on and if you need to get that clip loose from in the motor you may want to get a screwdriver or pliers or something to help you with that that'll be it okay when you come under the vehicle right behind the driver's wheel You'll come in, you'll see the transmission pan. First thing you need to do is to remove this transmission shifter cable bracket. So you want to pull this bolt here and then pull this bolt here. This little bolt is a uh, 3 eighths. The larger bolt is a 11 16. So pull those two bolts, then unhook the thing from the shifter bracket, and then move that bracket out of the way. Next thing you're going to do is unhook that spring from that bracket, and then try to move it out of the way. Okay, now that you have that out of the way, if you look up past that, you can look way up there and you'll see the crank sensor. So you got to get that bolt right there out. I think it's a 12 millimeter, but I'm not sure. I'll find out in a minute. So you're not going to reach it with that other stuff in the way. So that's what I'm reaching for to pull that bolt. Okay, I got the bolt out of the sensor. I'm going to pull the sensor out and figure out where the wires go. I think the wires go on the passenger side of the motor, right on the back of the motor where the uh, uh, coil pack attachment is. So let me pull it out and follow it over. Alright, when you come into the motor, there's a set of wires and stuff back there. You see that red wire? That red wire is the plug for that cam sensor. So you want to unsnap it fish it out, unplug it, plug the new one in, and then try to toss it back over the uh, transmission bell housing to the other side to put it back on. 
Here's the old sensor when it came out. It had this little brass or metal piece over the wire to protect the wire from, I guess, heat or damage or anything like that. So you want to make sure you get that back on when you put it back in place. It looks like it goes on real simple. Okay, I got the crank sensor back on with the wire bracket protecting the wires. So now I'm going to come back here and rehook up this uh, cable assembly. Okay, I got the uh, bracket put back in for the cable shifter. I got the uh, top of the arm clipped back on the linkage and I got the spring back attached. So that's all there is to changing the crank sensor. I'm going to go ahead, crank the car up, take it for a drive, and make sure the code stay clear. If you feel that this information was beneficial, please like it and share it with your social media friends. Go ahead and subscribe to my page so you will get notification of future videos that I post. You can feel free to visit my website, robertspinner.com, post questions, and thanks again for watching.